Rivers Hero. Youngstown, three on one through center. Here's Letnoff, near side. Letnoff, backhand, shooting, scores! Growing up in Detroit, Everett Fitzhugh's love for hockey started at a young age. I went home one day and, and watched a, a Wings game, and they just happened to be playing the Oilers uh, at the time, and, and they had two black players on their team. So for me, that was really, really big to see someone who looked like me playing in the NHL. Um, you know, I don't, I don't need to tell you that historically hockey is is a predominantly white male sport. So to see, you know, two people who look like you at nine years old, I mean, that's something that was pretty remarkable. While his fandom started in third grade, his passion for broadcasting hockey bloomed on the campus of Bowling Green State University at Slater Family Ice Arena. My first game my freshman year, fell in love with it. I was a color analyst and uh, I called my mom that night the next day and I said, so we're going to put all the eggs in the hockey basket. This is um, this is our career path. And she was like, all right, well, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. So she's always been so supportive of me. And, and but even her eyebrows were like, OK, let's see where this goes. Ultimately, it led me. Uh, it led me to to my goal, my dream uh, of being in the NHL. He was a really, really fun guy to be around, and got along great with all the players and all the staff and and all the families. Everybody was. He was. He's just. I mean, as you know, he's just a. If you don't like Everett Fitzhugh, then you got some of your issues of your own. And then, you know, to see Everett, you know, we we were all part of Everett's professional process, whether it was a letter of recommendation or a or a call that someone said, "Hey, we're." We're thinking about ever fits you uh, for, for this position. What are your thoughts? So it was, uh, it was fun to be a part of that process. And then to see him ultimately get to where he is now, you know, I told Everett when, when, when I found out, I sent him a text and he called me right away. And, and I told him, I said, I'm as proud as you as, as we are of any play. So I guess that's the best compliment. Johnson, two on one with five. Johnson shoots off the glove of Hildebrand. He scores. Following stops in Chicago, Youngstown, and most recently Cincinnati, Fitzhugh got the call, or rather email, he'd always dreamed of. And the Cyclones have a two-on lead. Early last year, The Athletic featured the BGSU graph. Shortly after the article's release, Seattle Kraken president and CEO Todd Lewicki made initial contact. I thought it was a prank at first, honestly. You know, I thought it was one of our coaches or someone in the Cyclone sales department playing a joke on me. But uh, I replied to the email and it was him. Um, and, you know, he said he enjoyed reading my story and, and wanted to hear more about me. And, um, you know, we copped on a phone call and it was an amazing phone call. Um, and then COVID hit, uh, you know, he said that he wanted to stay in touch and things like that. And um, so, you know, I thought that with COVID coming along, it was, you know, we'll be in touch later. We'll wait for all this to pass. And, and I kind of put it on the back burner, but still, you know, had in, in, in my mind. Uh, and then I get a, another email in May um, and he said, hey, I, I know the whole world's kind of gone crazy, but we're still building for 21-22 for and would love to know if you're still interested. If you are, I want to start that, that, that interview process. And, you know, once I picked my jaw up off the floor, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's do this. When Fitzhugh accepted the Kraken's offer in July, he made history becoming the first black team broadcaster in the NHL. It's humbling, it's flattering. Um, you know, I, I, I've told people, I don't think anybody ever sets out to, to be the role model or the trailblazer, but I think if you're presented with that opportunity, you owe it to the culture, you owe it to the sport, obviously you owe it to those people, but I think more importantly, you owe it to yourself to, to, to take that responsibility head on. Um, you know, for me, there weren't a lot of, of positive black role models in hockey for when I was growing up. You know, I had George LaRock, I had Mike Greer, and I had Anson Carter. Um, you know, so for me to be able to, to, to show that 12 year old black kid in Detroit or Cleveland or wherever the case is, that hey, there is a place for you in this game. There, you know, hockey is not just um, an old white man sport. You can be a person of color. You can be a woman. You can, you know, have a disability and and still find your way and have a voice in this game. That's huge for me. And and I'm 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 looking forward to the day where. You know, there there's more than one black play by play announcer. I don't want that to be, you know, something that needs to be celebrated. I want that to be something that's standard. Um, and for me to be able to 
to start and, and to be in a position where I can help move that train along, um, I'll do whatever I can. What's up, everyone? This is Everett Fitzhugh, team broadcaster for your Seattle Kraken. The Kraken will officially drop the puck next year. Until then, follow Fitzhugh and the franchise's journey on social media at The Voice Fits on Twitter. In Toledo, Claire Dow, BCSN.